Welcome to the Beat 139. I'm Doc. How y'all feeling this evening? I'm Don Vito. What's going on? Welcome to the Beat. I'm Callie, and we would like to welcome our first guest of the night, Harlem Native from the legendary Dapper Dance Boutique, Fly Forever Collections, Mel Maxi. Welcome, Mel. What's up, Mel? Welcome to the show, bro. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. to be here on the Beat. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, Mel, we know you was born and raised in Harlem. So, what exactly, where are you now? Well, right now, I'm back in New York. I mean, I'm born and raised in Harlem. Mm -hmm. But I done lived in so many different cities, it's crazy, you know? From, um, I mean, from the Lou to Cincinnati, Memphis, Chicago, VA, I mean, all over. But I'm back home now, put it like that. Okay. okay. You know? Yeah, so, um, I'm gonna go to the beginning, yeah. far as your, your uh, upbringing. Can you um, go into that? Well, um, I was born and raised in Harlem on Lexington Ave, on 30th Street, you know. And um, my first encounter with Dap, I was about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. What Dap used to do, Dap used to pull up in the big station wagon mm -hmm. and um, take the whole crew to White Castles in the Bronx. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, this is before he had the store. Okay. So he used to always come around, because Dap is from the block. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's yeah. from Lexington Ave. Right. So what he used to do was take us all around. So for some reason, we disconnected. You know, our families was always connected mm -hmm. on Lexington Ave. So what we right. did was we connected. So when Dap opened the store, I was fortunate to be the one that, he was like, yo, come on. You mm -hmm. know, took me on this wing. And um, Melly Mel turned into Gucci Mel. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, the rest was history from there, yo. So that's kind of like my beginning of my upbringing, you know? So you was 10 when you started learning design and stuff like that? Nah, nah. Oh, you just was around? I just was around them. All right. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't start designing until like, I would say, 93, 94. You know what I'm saying? I was learning fashion just by being around him growing up. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But as far as me hands on, mm -hmm. you know, I used to do a little printing and all that. Yeah. Of course that. Mm -hmm. But as far as like hands on learning fashion, that didn't come until about like 93, 94. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you all of you, so you just like fresh to death or, you know, stuff um, like that. It's just in me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just in me from from, like I said, being in the store, you know, watching cats, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have to give it up to people like, I would say, Alpo, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Rich, mm -hmm. um, OG Daniel. Mm -hmm. Gotta give it up to my man, OG Daniel, without a question. Right. And then a lot of the, the cats from out of Connecticut that used to come through, you know, um, JBL out of Philly, mm -hmm. Aaron and them. You know, I watched a lot of them cats. And then from there, and also being with that, you know, yeah. I just picked up a lot of that stuff from, you know, all of them, all, all in one, and then I just took it and like ran with it, you know? Yeah. But, like I said, the originators is, is, in my eyes, was like Al Cole, you know, I gotta say Pretty Black, mm -hmm. DB Sharp, you know? Yeah. People like them, OGs like them, you know? Yeah. So you like the, the fly, the, the, well, I guess the, the outfits that Dap was doing, he did it for a lot of the guys who was in the streets. Yeah. So you took a liking to that. So you like, man, this is my lane here. When, yeah. when, 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 what age was that when you like, when you said, this is what I want to do? I know, I know you said 93, you start doing Yeah. But when did you say to yourself, this is what I want to do? I would say, in the late 80s, mm -hmm. I would say in the late 80s. Mm -hmm. In the late 80s, I would say because um, during the time, like I said, I was you know helping them with the material, going downtown. We would you know meet up with certain people, you know buying the first skins. I was learning stuff like that, but just really watching, you know what I'm saying, and learning at the same time. So what I would do is uh, you know just watch that. Just, just watch how you move and how you created stuff and how the, the, the African brothers cut patterns and, 
and, and, and stuff like that. And I just took it in and said, yo, shit, I'm gonna start doing it myself. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, I started wearing my Gucci jackets, putting Gucci Mel on it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, this and that. And what became a Mel Maxi was um, a friend of mine, Walter Berry, basketball yeah, player, Walter yeah, Berry. Yeah, yeah. Me and Walt was so cool. Took, it was just like a curl. Like, yo, Mel, I like the way you be wearing the joint. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, good looking out, Walt. He's like, you know what? I'm going to start calling you Mel Maxi. We're going to drop the Gucci. We're going to start calling you Mel Maxi. And I was like, yo, I like that. And ever since then, everybody started calling me Mel Maxi. You know? But Walt has a little curl, too. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He got that he has some curves, too. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think I get a little credit for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you ain't having no formalized training. You just. Nah. I ain't have no schooling as far as fashion is concerned. Yeah. To be honest, after I got a certain age, mm -hmm. I mean, not to be saying it like that, but mm -hmm. I was, I was it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, everywhere I go, when I travel, North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, everybody just loved my swag. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. The way I put it together, mm -hmm. you know, and they always wanted to be like, yo. Like that can you do something like that for me man one thing led to another and that's when i was like you know what let me start taking this a little this little hobby and start you know yeah. cashing in on it a little bit you know and i really didn't take it serious seriously mm -hmm. until i had to come back to new york maybe about six years ago to help take care of my uncle that was going through a cancer situation mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so Cause I was still in the streets moving around, mm -hmm. around right. different cities. If he'd have put this with that, he'd have killed it with that. Like, I guess it becomes like part of you. Like, just like, I guess like in basketball, a scout. Like every time you watch a game, he got the scout. It probably had nothing to do with him to play his scout. It's just a thing. Is it it's like that with you? Like pause, you just look, look and see stuff and just start visualizing it just off the GP? You know what's crazy? I don't even peep other people's styles. Like, when I see somebody with something fly, I'm like, oh, that's nice. But I don't say, yo, I'll probably would have bouncing like this or, or bouncing like that. To be honest, I don't pay nobody else too much attention in fashion. Mm -hmm. I just be in my own zone. Like, somebody will say something to me, yo, man, I was thinking about it because I, I got yo, I got this color in my head, and I, and I think, and I'd be like, yo, you know what, why don't you do this like this? I could do this for you, like, they be like, dang, you quick with it, B, you feel yeah. me? And I could, you know, turn over something in a day. So, you know, my fashion, I don't even pay too many people no attention. I just do what I do, you know, mm -hmm. for real. So, um, tell us something a little about um, Fly Forever Collection. When you say you're traveling, are you traveling in regards to, you know, the business and like doing fashion shows and stuff like that or in so something else? What exactly are you doing? With the Fly Forever, that was a friend of mine that came up with that name. He was describing me to somebody else and he was like, you know, my man Mel Max, he you know, you know, he been fly, he been fly forever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa, I like that. That's just how you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I took it and, and, and ran with it and incorporated it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's very catchy. You know, so as far as me traveling and, and when I travel, it's really like I'm going to have fun and do a little business at the same time. Like I just got back from Memphis the other day. I was out there with um, my man Faze on Love mm -hmm. and um, he had shows all during the weekend. So I do a lot of stuff for him, but he's about to do a special and he's about to do Vegas. So me and him working on like a, a, a situation where it's like the comedian and his and his designer. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So we trying to put something like that together right now as we speak. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing the outfit for a special right now. Mm -hmm. So when I do travel, it's, 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 it's for fun and it's business too. But as far as fashion shows in other cities, mm -hmm. nah. You might know that. I mean, I'm coming through the block. Mm -hmm. I ain't get a chance to get on a t-shirt. So I told, Dog, I said, yo, give me a t-shirt. I said, little homie, take that around the corner of the ghost. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, he took it around the corner of the ghost. Two days later, this kid posted it on Instagram. He went up on the roof. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to Ghost. Yeah. Marty is a monster. He went up on the roof without nobody even, I know we didn't even meet him. Yeah. And did a whole 
thing on Harlem and all that with the Harlem Merman t-shirt on. Wow. And ever since then, that's when it really, really started jumping off. Then it went from that to the hoodie. He got the jacket. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, I do all the custom couture stuff, the varsity, all American varsities and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. When it comes to the clothing, right. I do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. You know. Yeah, that thing took off. You see everywhere, you know what's crazy about it? It's simple, it just works. It ain't even yeah. the logo or nothing. Yeah. It just works, Harlem yeah. Merman. Yeah. Like, it, it, and sometimes it's simple. Yeah. It makes, you know, people don't want all a whole bunch of yeah. stuff all the time. They ain't yeah. no big logo or nothing, just Harlem Merman. It's yeah. got a, it, the meaning, the meaning of Harlem and Merman. You know, yeah. it's like simple, yeah. it's and simple. it's clean, and everybody, it, uh, people can relate yeah. to it. And it works. Yeah. It works and like it's great. Still I just got a, um, a text from Nick Cannon. He's like, yo, send me all the mediums of the stuff that you got. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because I do a lot of stuff for him. So, mm -hmm. he was like, yo, send me um, and D1 just said me dark. He said, um, Samuel Jackson was on the TV show. Yeah, he's on Paul Murray Breakfast Club. Show on. Yeah, Breakfast Club, TV show and all that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> DB Sharp Public Relations came. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. He be getting it in with that home Merck and I ain't going for yes, real. he do. Yes, he do. Um, so what's what you got going on in Vegas, man? Like, uh, some, uh, world famous magic fashion trade show. Something. You know like what's that? crazy? I never did that. No, nah. never. I never did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, some people just born right. with that, with that it factor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess I was just, I was just born with it. Where once I realized. Around like that, and I'm doing that. Oh man, this right here is easy to me. Because mm -hmm. all the young cats that came up under, yeah. un up under me and up under that, yeah. I mean, they cool, but they, you know, I took it to a whole nother level. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually, when I first met Nelly, I remember it was in 2000. He was at Electric Lady Studio downtown. Mm -hmm. Me and Dad pulled up. Dad was like, nah, man, you. You, 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 it, you know what I'm saying? And I end up starting do, doing Nelly, Cash Money, I mean, Cam, all of them, but I like, like took the brand. Times? You know what I'm saying? I would say Major, mm -hmm. Major was, was, I had to give it up to, to Nelly. That's what's that. So he's the first yeah. one who. Yeah, yeah. Morbid, like, okay. Me and him used to be on MTV. I mean, me and Nelly became. So you guys is pretty yeah. much doing a little bit of everything. Yeah, then I got a, a Russian guy that does all the furs that work for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my team is crazy. We could do anything. I mean, I could do anything. Okay. It's nothing I can't do. And I went to the um, Yo MTV Raps when they had it in um, the Barclays. Yeah. And Eric yeah. B and Rock Kim came out with the Gucci oh, furs man. on, right? I think I was telling the doctor about it. I said, yo, hey, B, my come came out some crazy yeah, fur. Yeah. I'm thinking that did it all nah. the time. I come to find that, you know, that was your work. Yeah, yeah, they you know what I'm saying? Barclays. That was crazy when they did white, white joints or something like that. Yeah. I was like, yo, it came out heavy too. Heavy. You know, because they make it, that was when every all the old school dudes was there, you know? And they, they had their little chains yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was your work, man. Yeah, um, Nice and Smooth came out with, mm -hmm. um, some dapper dance stuff on and Eric B and came out with the with the Mel Maxi on with the custom blue white Gucci with the white fox fur. I mean yeah, the Savoy crystal thread in the back. I mean it was nasty. That shit, it was, that was nasty. Is that your was um nasty. your work is it affordable? Yeah. Yeah. It's affordable compared to the other yeah. the other people. <laughs> yeah. So, where do you see your brand in the next uh, two years? Like, where are you trying to go with Black Forever? Well, basically, I'm I'm really focusing on the Harlem American right now. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm doing the um the um the sample line for the jackets right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the women and the men. Oh my God, it's crazy. Sick. So that should be finished within the next week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really pushing that because I'm going to also do like some Harlem American fur. You know what I'm saying? It, it's really all about Harlem American. Now, it's fly forever always. Mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? But as far as fashion, it's... And it's, the line is pretty much the All-American, right? Harlem American, yeah. Harlem American. Okay. And um, 
and um, like I said, I'm still gonna do custom. Yeah. So that's all day yeah. long. And um, there's a few other things, but you know, the custom in the Hall of American is like forefront. Yeah. Okay. So we gotta sell this stuff online? Nah, you gotta, you know, you gotta know me or know somebody that know me. I don't just, you know, I can't you know, do the online thing or nothing. But hallofamerican.com all day. But, you know what I'm saying? Get that all day, allamerican.com. Grab them t-shirts, some hoodies, and all that. I can't even tell you when, to be honest. No, I say when, how long, like two years, a year, that to really learn to do it on your own. You can just get up and get some material and stuff. So like, what you do? When I, got, when I got the workers under my belt, that's when I was say. I would say about 97. Once I got workers under my belt, that's when I consider myself doing it on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But until then, if I got to use somebody else workers, then, you know, a lot of these designers, uh, they using other people workers. And I got my own crew. They've been with me since. Mm -hmm. so, I mean. How many is like four y'all? What, the crew? Yeah. Yeah, dang. <laughs> I mean, y'all got like you got like a studio or something. Or? Nah, I got a um apartment that we have for forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like a bundle of us is a business, so it's nobody that's up under us. So mm -hmm. no around no noise. No noise, yeah. machines. But you know, we got them things on it now. We you know, kind of quiet now. Right. We got the new things we throw in the machine. Mm -hmm. It's kind of quiet now. So yeah, that's what we work out of. So if you get like a large order or something, mm -hmm. um, you got four, y'all got to run through it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. um, once you got patterns and all that stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy. Right. Yeah, go, go, go. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right, right. You know, one person could do, one person could do like two outfits in a day. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean... It's clockwork, you know. You give me enough time, I can do. You know, I can do anything. You ever do anything with any vehicles or something like that? Like yeah, you know, I did some furniture and all that stuff. Right. You know, um, I was thinking about doing bouncing. I'm not gonna say what, but it was gonna be a vehicle. But I, I'm gonna wait until next time. and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but this is something crazy. This is gonna be crazy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was going to be real The cars nice. always win, you know? Yeah. You pull up in a nice ride. Yeah. Especially and, the seats. And you got some on yeah. the seats. You know, yeah. you know. I remember when we first did, um, me and Dad used to, when we first did the um, Red and White MCM Jeep. Mm -hmm. And him used to always, and I'd be like, yeah, Dad, you know what time it is, right? He'd be like, what time is it? He'd be like, yo, you know, that's when Red Alert and all used to come on. Yeah, yeah. We got the system in the Jeep. We got the top down. Mm -hmm. And we'd go cruising. And sometimes we'd hit up DC. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we used to have so much fun in that MCM Jeep. Right, right. We used to hit Baltimore. They used to go crazy. They used to be chasing miners and that. <laughs> so that MCM was crazy in DC and all that. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, God. they love it down there. Yeah. They were. Yeah, they do love it in DC, you're right. What? Because I know a few people down there, when they come up here, they had the bags. Yeah. 